What is going on, NBA Draft fans? Welcome to Film Sesh. My name is Corey Tullaba, the NBA Draft Dude, and I have a very special guest with us today. We got Landers Nolly in the house to come chop it up, break down some film, and uh, talk about his process today. So, uh, Landers, what's going on, man? How you doing? Man, I'm doing good. Uh, the process has been fun, and just enjoying every workout and learning something new. Yeah, uh, I mean, this has got to be such a unique special time in your life flying around city to city getting to work out against you know some of the best basketball prospects in the entire country um you know tell me about the that whole process and and what it's like you know having to fly and bounce around to all these different places every day man it's definitely busy uh i actually just got in this morning at about 2 30 uh i'm in new york right now so it's definitely a lot <laughs> especially like <laughs> Six to seven, maybe eight flights a week, just depending on how many workouts you have. But it's stressful at times, but just got to do what you got to do. Have you gotten to explore any of the, uh, you know, cities that you've visited for workouts? Uh, Not really. I mean, I get here like the day before, uh, maybe have a day off. So like that day, I'm really just catching up on sleep from the flights uh, or just relaxing, getting a massage or something. But no, nah, not really any tourist time. Yeah, there'll, there'll be time for that. Uh you know, throughout the, the, the actual season. Um, before we dive into some film, uh, for anybody who isn't familiar, you know, with your game, how would you describe your game? Uh, definitely a sharpshooter, uh, but I can defend. So I would say more like a three and D. I would say that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a pretty uh, fitting description. And we're going to get into, you know, the three. We'll get into the D. And then I think you got some more stuff to your game, too, that we can get into. So let's start it off. You're, you're talking about being a sharpshooter. I absolutely love this play here because you aren't just a guy who needs to, like, catch and shoot and stand in a, a spot. Like, you're really good off movement, and this is really crafty. Um, and... So, so kind of take me through uh, this clip here and and break it down for for how you like to you know kind of move off movement and and fake out defenders and use screens to get yourself open. I feel like in this play, uh, it was called three high, but it's just like a floppy set, just two screeners and two passes up top. But I mean, I had a lot of separation between me and him. Like he wasn't connected at all, so I I was really free to go off either side, and I felt like either way I was gonna get the same shot. Yeah, uh, I, that's what's so fun about those sloppy sets for shooters, right? You get to ultimately kind of make the decision as to which way you're going to come off. And that's yeah. what makes it so hard to defend because you okay. could make a different read every single time. Um, yeah. Moving into this next clip, this is like a, a, a hammer set that you guys would run, um, you know, a, a decent amount. And I, I think that, you know, it looks on its surface like it's kind of a, a, an easy play, right? You're you're kind of just fading into the corner. But I, I think with something like this, it's it's all about timing. So how do you know exactly when to to time, you know, the movement at the exact time to come off the screen to to get yourself open for a shot? Uh, you really just got to read your defender. Mainly, I, in this play, I was reading Dave. So as he went baseline and I saw him going out of bounds, I knew at that point he needed me to be there. So I felt like the timing on this play was perfect. But we also worked on this play in practice for like certain situations. Maybe we would use it late in the game if we needed a three, but we we didn't run it often. So like teams weren't really prepared for it, I would say. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you get hit with like a, you know, a blind screen on the backside and you're not prepared mm -hmm. for this play late in the game. You're going to get a good look and uh, spot up, bang, splash. Now th this is a uh, this is a fun one. Um, again, it shows your ability to kind of come off movement. Um, you're kind of you know spacing the floor on the, the weak side, then you come off and banks open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was one of the craziest shots I had at home all year. <laughs> it, I don't know why I shot it so hard, but it's just a, a double. I think it's a double. Yeah, it's a double away screen, and it's just a stagger. You just read it, and I don't know. Yeah, the bank was open that day. <laughs> that's a that. <laughs> That shooter's touch, though, right? You know, you because yeah, you got you shoot a soft softball, yeah. um, <laughs> confident, and and sometimes, man, you just you got it going, and hey, you get the same amount, the same three points. It's <laughs> worth it. It's worth the same amount, a hundred percent. Um, and then uh, this one I like too because it, it shows a little bit more of of your game before we actually get into the shot. A little sauce with the behind the back pass. Uh, the layup doesn't uh go in, but you spot up. <laughs> Splash. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, like Coach always say, if you get off of it early, it's going to have to f 
find his way back to you. And that was a perfect situation. Yeah. And I think like, you know, ultimately, you know, uh, in your young career, you know, first, second year in the league, I think this spot up stuff is how you're going to find minutes on the floor. Like you talked about your ability to, uh, you know, play defense. Like, obviously that's a big part of getting on the floor early as well. But, you know, again, like you could do a lot, obviously great touch as a passer, but this ability to just no hesitation, get the ball, not a clean pass. You, you know, you get set up easy, knock it down. Um, and, and and what I like about you as a shooter is, is again, like the versatility of it all. Cause not only can you do it off the catch, but you got some shit to you off the bounce too. You're running the pick and roll really crafty. Feels like nobody speeds you up watching you. No, I feel like, nah, as me being a veteran in the college setting, I feel like I've seen a lot of situations before, especially like all conferences, all types of players, different length, different. So in the, in the pick and roll, you just got to read your defenders and make the best situation and make the best play. Did it take you a while to like develop that pace? Oh, most definitely. In the beginning, being a freshman, sophomore, I was definitely more sped up, a little sloppier. But as the years went on, more reps, seeing this situation multiple times, it just became slowed down the game. And it just I just looked at it different. Yeah, I think that experience at every level, like that's one of the big things, right? Like every level, the speed gets a little quicker. The athletes yeah. get a little bit better um, and you just got to, you know, adjust to it. And then you could do it. No screen off the bounce <laughs> isolation. Um, this is a, a nice little easy combo move. Like you're not doing anything crazy. You're not dribbling the air out of the ball. Right. Yeah. Just hand it. Like that, was a rep. that was like, that's a workout move. Uh, starting mm. a half court dribbling in. It's more like a transition shot, but in the half court said me coming down, got my defender on his heels. I just saw a shot. I felt like I could make. And and that's against a, a good defender, a great defensive team. Um, long, athletic, like they play on a string and that's confident face up. Like one of the opening possessions of the game. You're trying to set the tone with a shot like this? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Against Houston, you got to <laughs> set the tone. Uh, I just love playing against Coach Sampson and his guys. It's just, you got to bring that energy. Yeah, you got to. That I mean, obviously they were one of the best teams in the country. So I love the confidence. I I love how uh you know you you got it going right away here. Um, and then you're not just a three point shooter. Like NBA early on, definitely that's going to be your role, right? Space the floor. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that you know you got to be able to leverage that three point shot, play in the lane, and and this little step back. I feel like this is one of your go tos, especially like coming off screens, going to your left. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, me being a bigger guard, I feel like it only take a little bit of space, like watching bigger guards in the league. So once you step back and get that little bit of separation, you're not going to get your – I feel like I'm not going to get my shot blocked. So is it is either going to be a foul or a good mid-range opportunity? Yeah, and, you know, this is a, a – you know, this is like an NBA-style set, like playing off the big, the DHO coming right off. He goes over. Like, you got to be able to attack it because, you know, teams aren't going to go under on you. Most right definitely. like you you yeah. there you've shown no, yeah like i mean i mean maybe maybe you hope so <laughs> <laughs> but they think i hope not yeah exactly again similar thing here into the body create separation dip your shoulder um you know i think you said being like a veteran um being a guy do you think like being older having like maybe strength that some of these young guys don't have does that help you create separation when you get into their body most definitely. I love like when teams try to get physical and like make me do other stuff. But knowing me, I just that's just go along with what I can already do. So the physicality, it don't really affect me at all. Yeah. And uh, at the next level, like you're going to have a lot of big, strong athletes. So well, being definitely. physical, you're going to have to set the tone just like you did that with with Houston. You're going to have to be physical and set the tone um, again, though, like uh, you play at your own pace and you're really crafty like here you know you got a uh you know mismatch on you right so like a, a guy a, a small guard like that i mean are, are you even like thinking like I i'm gonna move off it or you're just like oh give me the rock i could just turn shoot nothing fancy it most definitely depends on where i catch it but then if i'm catching it that close yeah it's just a shot i feel like i don't even need to dribble <laughs> i just need to turn and face observe if there's a double coming or not and just go to work what was it like playing uh, against Memphis this year? Uh, in the beginning of the game, for sure, it was definitely emotional. But as the game went on, I feel like it was just another basketball game, and I was trying to help my team win the game. 
Yeah, th- 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 that's the right approach, right? Like, obviously, we're all human. You're gonna have, you know, that emotion. kind of emotion yeah. coming into the game, sure. and you use it to, you know, to p- play to your uh, your strengths and your advantage. Um, yep. I love this one. I, I, th- this last one in the mid range here. Who'd you get this from? Mid range. Who'd you get this one? Right, this specific one right here. The the fall away one leg leaner. Dirk. I, yes. I, okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, Dirk. <laughs> I watched him do that move so many times, and it's like it's, I wouldn't say impossible to stop, but like nine times out of ten, either you're gonna miss or you're gonna make it. It's not you got you're not getting stopped in that situation. I feel like <laughs> no, making it. Yeah, I was I was hoping that you were gonna say Dirk because I feel like uh, you know down. like un you know one of the best shooting bigs of all time. This is his go to. He's got the silhouette now. Um, but a lot of a player modern players have you know in- integrated into their game. So I mean. Th- this is a tough shot. So, like, how much do you have to rep this out before you feel comfortable doing it in a game? The crazy thing about it, Coach Miller hated this shot. <laughs> <laughs> he hated this shot. And if he watched this, he he probably would laugh because he hated these type of shots. But I worked on these shots all the time, like, with the GAs, even with him. But he wasn't a big fan of these shots, for sure. So you <laughs> had to make them for him not to say something to you. <laughs> shout out to Shout out to Coach. And... <laughs> You make it right, so it's, sure. it's only, it only so on much you can say when you make it. <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah, um, now the one I, I think the thing that uh, when breaking down your game, and that's a nice little combo here. Um, the one area, big area of improvement, I think people would say is your your finishing around the rim, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I think here you do a good job. You attack top foot. And it, it feels like, I mean, you see the help probably coming over um, at the rim, but you stop your momentum and you kind of try to go into his body and it, it mm-hmm. kind of throws you off a, a little bit. So, you know, what have you been doing, um, you know, uh, working out to kind of like work on your finishes around the rim? Uh, just finishing through contact, um, whether it's like a GA or a manager just holding up a stick or even just fouling me when I'm going to the basket so I can learn how to finish through contact because that's definitely what it's going to be at the next level for sure. A hundred percent. And, you know, I I think that you showed that you could absolutely do that and you do a really good job of that here. Again, you're coming off the screen and you dip that shoulder and you you keep your momentum going forward instead of trying to like draw a foul, right? Like you just push him out of the way. Um, So I think this is kind of what you're talking about, right? Like just using that momentum, keeping it forward. Going down a little bit, yeah embracing physicality uh for sure now uh take me through this uh this next clip here um is there anything you would do differently on uh on this clip so we get the ball coming up like semi transition break seems like a break the guy down a little bit out of control throw throw something up with your left hand any what would you do differently on this possession I felt like I would have either shot the first shot in transition or I definitely would have took another dribble and yeah. overpowered and finished, especially looking at who the defender was. I definitely would have took another dribble and probably. Yeah, finished. I think I think that extra dribble would open up mm-hmm. a lot, um, whether you get an open layup at the rim or you get a little drop off. And when we talk about your playmaking, we're going to show that, you know, that's a, a pass that you're capable of making. But oh, I think that uh, this is, you know, kind of similar – a similar drive going to your left here. And I think you show that you could absolutely do that. Come off a little pin down, get downhill, get yeah, all the way to the rim. Dribble. Yeah. That extra dribble. It just, it just keep me on balance and I can get my power and go into it. Finish it with my left. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, that's the the kind of stuff that uh, you're going to have to do at the next level, you know, like, you, you throw up that first one, that kind of like awkward left hand. You might be on the bench as a rookie, right? But, uh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> but you can, as a rookie, I probably wouldn't shoot that. Yeah, you can get away with it, you know, as a vet in, in, in college. Uh, I want to talk about your playmaking a little bit now, too, because I think that <clears throat> you're a really, really good playmaking, playmaker. And I think what we've seen, if anything, now in the NBA, especially in the playoffs, is that you have to be able to have multi dimensions to your game, right? Oh, like definitely. you can't, you can't just be a guy who, is making shots because if you can't defend then you know you can't be on the floor late in games or if you could just defend you can't make shots so you got to be able to do a little bit of everything and this is a a great read coming off the screen um in a this is the kind of pass that nba teams really want to see hitting that that weak side uh corner so 
Uh, take me through like what you you're reading on this play as you as you come off the uh, the ball screen. Well, first I'm looking at the tag under the basket to see if he's gonna tag the my big man. But if he don't tag, it was definitely a lob. I could have threw the shake pass back, but I felt like Dave was a better shooter than who is this than Josh. So I felt like that was the better read for the situation. Yeah, and it was a great read, even if it doesn't, you know, uh, result in in the assist. It's it's the right play, and that's a shot that you take every time down, right? Um, I love this possession too, because again, it goes back to you not getting sped up. It goes back to your patience, and that's a nifty little drop off, drop off, and it leads to the foul. T- take me through like the the process when you're you know kind of like snaking these ball screens or uh, putting guys in jail and and you know a little, little, little crap into it. I feel like in this situation, well, in those situations, I'm never worried about the defender once he get on my back. I'm always looking at the big in front of me to see how we gonna play it because it's two on one. Obviously, going downhill, and if he didn't step up, I was gonna shoot a mid range or finish try and finish a little floater. But he didn't. St- he stepped up, so I had to drop it off. That was the most obvious pass. So yeah, so when you have him on your back there, um, you're trying to make that big play like cat and mouse between you yep. and the roller. Because mm-hmm. him, he can't get back into play. Once he's on my back, I feel like I'm not letting him back into play. So right. I'm trying to go downhill and put pressure on the big and make him make a decision. Obviously, in this one, I guess he thought I was going to shoot because he lunged forward, and that's when I made the pass. Yeah, that it's that little jump, uh, yeah. right? Because you, you're you're a good mid range shooter, so he's he's got to contest it, especially with mm-hmm. that big who's who's got really hit well on the screen um yeah uh that's that's great stuff uh all right let's go through this next one um and this is we we referenced it earlier about you know when we were talking about your finishing and getting all the way downhill taking the extra dribble uh again you you come off i feel like you love coming off your left you're so good at it and there's that little drop off yeah i love going left Uh, i make most of my passes and finishes with my left i do pretty much everything in my life with my left except shoot the basketball (laughs) Mm, really (laughs) yeah i dunk on my left i do everything with my left do you do you write with your left hand or just like i go on the both man i go on both oh ambidextrous what i'm doing yeah it just depends on what i'm doing yeah you look really comfortable uh driving to your left operating that way i feel like if you're a righty shooter too it's uh it's easier to to go left because you could just pull up a, a little bit easier. It goes right into yeah, your shot pocket, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but this is really nice, and and that's what that extra dribble getting all the way to the rim does. It forces the the big to come yeah, over, the yeah, help yeah. to commit, mm-hmm. and uh, easy little drop off pass for for two. It's, it's pretty stuff. Um, and then you know I I think also like uh, you make really quick decisions, quick reads like. Uh, you're you're really good at again reading the defense. You've, you've seen the the reps. You obviously have good chemistry there. This is a really nifty little slip pass. So um, how do you read like this slip versus you know maybe taking the the play all the way through? Uh, well, me and Vic, we had a really good connection with him setting screen. So I always told him like, once you see the defender get on the outside of your hip and come towards me, just slip out of it. Like, there's no point in you being there no more because you open obviously because the big worried about me. So right. once you get out of there, I'm I'm for sure gonna hit you. So it's just what you going to do when you get the ball. Yeah. And I think one of the underrated uh, things when we talk about like players who could pass is like the ball placement. Mm-hmm. Like this is you gotta you really, you got to lead them. That, you exactly. Lead them. If exactly. You a pass or a short pass, it can get tipped, deflected, anything can happen. Yeah. Or they catch it behind and then it yep. allows the, the help to come and recover. So that, that really good ball placement, really good read. Uh, and then again, like, teams they they want guys who can make quick decisions they want to play 0.5 basketball and they want guys who could turn good into great and you know you got a good shot there but you turn it into a great shot with that one more unselfish um so you know it, ha- have you always been a guy who's kind of like unselfish willing to make the yeah. extra pass that's just how i was taught to play basketball like it was mm-hmm. it was some plays this year where they were like no, you shoot, you shoot. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not open as he, I'm not as open as him. So why would I shoot? Like, I probably right. got talked to about not shooting that play. But I'm like, he more open than me. Like, I'm open, but he wide open. <laughs> he like, open, yeah, he's open, open. <laughs> yeah, it was just obvious. Like, why would, no matter if he make it or miss it, he was more open than me. Yeah, but if you don't I even have like to. That, I'm getting off of it. You don't even have to think about it. You as soon as that ball touches your hand, it's like, oh, it might as well be a tap pass because that thing is flying. Um, and you no give one, it again. The ball was coming. I'm seeing it's already a two on one. So either it was going to be a ball fake or a quick pass. Mm. I just wanted to see how he was going to react to it coming out to me. 
Yeah, and that's what makes that weak side so hard to defend when you can get a skip pass out there, right? Um, yeah, great, great, great pass. And then uh, we saw earlier you being on the receiving end of, you know, kind of one of those like hammer actions. And uh, here you get downhill, uh, kind of playing you to ice the – and beautiful, beautiful kick out to the weak side corner. How much, um, you know, do, do you value being able to make that weak side hit? Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably I love passing like threading the needle, like all the risky passes. I love them as long as they get delivered. I love like the thrill of being able to make that pass because there's a lot of people that can't make that pass, honestly. So, me being able to possess that ability, I just try to take full advantage of it for sure. Yeah, and I think does does being you know you're what six seven like mm-hmm. does being six seven help you make a, a lot of these like advanced reads? Yeah, it definitely does because we're able to see over because it's not really well playing in college. It wasn't a lot of six, seven defenders in my face. So I'm really reading the majority of the court at all times. And that's what give me that ability to make those passes. And there might be bigger defenders in the league, but there's also probably going to be more spacing For sure. on the floor. For right? sure. So, you, so you, obviously give me opportunities to maybe get to the basket more or the help come over. And it's even more of a wide shot, wide open shot for that corner man. And yeah, and I think like, you know, you might not be running a ton of like ball screens, especially as like the initiator, but being able to like close out, attack, get downhill, and you know, take advantage of these kind of situations where the defense does collapse um and hit open shooters at the next level, it's it's gonna be absolutely huge. Uh I want to uh now transition over to the uh the defensive side of the ball because you are six seven, you have a nearly seven foot wingspan. Um, and I, I think that you know, this is a, a really impressive uh, possession for you is showing basically the the full gamut of of what you're capable of and you you force Trayvon Mark into a, a really bad shot but even before that initial possession in that shot it, all the work getting over the screen um all of that stuff working hard for you know a, a good amount of the time so um take me through this possession and you know kind of how you approach guarding a guy like this uh, I feel like it's Houston <laughs> your mindset just got to be different in this situation. Your mindset just got to be different. You got to do all the small stuff to just get through. You can't get hit. You can't get punked. And you just got to fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, fight. They're, they're a bunch of like, like all their bigs are like six, eight with seven, mm-hmm. two wingspans strong yeah. as, as hell. Right. Like, yep. um, what are you trying to do on, on Tremon Mark? Like, uh, are, are you trying to force him right? Uh, or, you know, what, what kind of shots are you trying to force him to, into? Uh, honestly, me, I was definitely just trying to use my length and make it more of a physical game, honestly. Like, whenever he catch it or he not he don't have the ball, just bump him, hit him, coming across the lane. Just make it a physical matchup because uh, I know that's the type of ball that they like to play and they might it just get in their head and they just start focusing on other stuff. So, well, Houston, you just got to play mind games for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to play mind games. 100%. They – uh talented talented team with a bunch of really like kind of weird versatile players uh now this one this is a this is a really good solid possession from you and it shows your defensive versatility uh this is jarris walker is Mm -hmm. is gonna get you he tries bringing you into that little uh mid post area um he makes a shot but what are you trying to make him that's a tough shot that's tough i'm not gonna lie he hit some tough shots this whole game just (laughs) It was like mirroring myself. Like, he just my size, capable, especially in this area, like really skilled, big. It just – it was a tough shot, honestly. I felt like I did everything I could do. Any Anything more, it would have been a foul. So, I right. felt like that's just a good player making a, a great shot. Yeah, you did it. You did your job. And, I mean, you're forcing him into like a, you know, an inefficient area of the floor. He's comfortable there, right? Oh, um, definitely. But, yeah, that's, that's good defense, yeah, that's good. Uh, right? Yeah, that's good. You kind of just tell him like, like, hey, do it again, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, more definitely, you're gonna have to hit those all game. <laughs> and if you could force him into that, he he's gonna miss more than he makes in that area. Um, but tough shot, good defense, and then uh, last possession, and and again shows your versatility and ability to guard. Uh, you know, good players. This Colby Jones uh, against Xavier. You know, projected first round pick mm-hmm. tries to go back door. You read it, tries to body you in the post, but you got good size and. Yeah, that's one thing I never was worried about getting body. Ugh. 
I'm a, I feel like I'm a fighter, man. I just that's one area. If we banging, I I just can't lose. <laughs> I just feel like I can't lose in that area. Like my size and my IQ and just making them play in uncomfortable areas. I just feel like I just feel like in this situation he wasn't comfortable. Mm. So uh, what are you trying to do against him when he's in this post area to to make him uncomfortable? I feel like anybody just being physical. Like I love playing physical. Like a lot of teams, I guess, didn't think that, but. I love playing physical on both ends of the court. So I just feel like this is not something that he saw too often, like a defender like me at that in that area. So I feel like him, he thought he was comfortable, I feel like. But yeah. I feel like I made him uncomfortable. Yeah. And I really good anticipation on the contest too, because you're almost like getting that contest up knowing that that's the the move. Yeah, he's gonna go kind into of his move watching this matchup and like the anticipation and the hype of the game. I had to lock in on film and see his tendency. So, this was a big matchup for Xavier in Cincinnati. So, I just had to be locked in. How much film do you watch? Oh, a lot, a ton, especially mm-hmm. my matchup wings, other wings, even in all conferences. I just, I just watch wings. I mean, that's what I am. So, I yeah. watch a lot of basketball, even point guards, because I know in college we switched a lot. So. I watch point guard. Anybody I maybe have a chance to guard. Anybody. Yeah. I I, I think that film is like one of the, the best ways to get better, um, yeah, especially when you got a big matchup coming up. So this is a great sure. defensive possession. Is there anybody that you are looking forward to guarding at the next level? Uh, For sure. Anthony Edwards and Jalen Brown. I mean, they're from mm. the top wings out of the city, so – I played Ant before coming out of high school. Yeah. Um, so we got we got history. And you had forty that game. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. And JP, yeah. I missed him by a couple by a year. So I get to look forward to that matchup for sure. Yeah, those guys. Uh, <laughs> they're they're a handful, right? Stop here. <laughs> Stop here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think you could bring to uh, an NBA team as a as a rookie? Uh, definitely my. Just my play style and my shooting ability, for sure. Defensive and shooting ability. Um, being vocal. Uh, I talk a lot. Talk a lot of trash. Mm. Just energy, for sure. So, a lot of stuff, honestly. Yeah, you're a trash talker? Yeah, most definitely. It get me going. It get a lot of people <laughs> out. It, see, that's the thing about trash talking. It get a lot of people out of their game, but me, it get me going. Like, mm. I could be having a bad game. Once somebody start talking, oh, yeah, shots start falling. <laughs> defense get more intense. It just, it's party time now. I love that because I ask that question a lot, and I feel like guys are lying to me when I ask them if they talk trash. A oh, lot yeah, of guys. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple technicals going too far, but it got my team fired up and got the energy going. Sometimes mm-hmm. you need that, like it's just yeah. stagnant too. I feel like we playing too soft. You just need something to get you riled up. A hundred percent, and and like you said, like not only. It might get in somebody's head. You, they try to make it a personal battle with you rather than playing they for the team, right? The team, they getting out of their game plan. But for me, it's getting me going. I'm, I'm just thinking ahead. A hundred percent. I love it. Um, all right. So you know, on my podcast, one of the segments that we have when we're just doing our regular show and we're breaking down film is we do a segment called "Sell Me This Pen" at the end, where my co-host will give like a thirty-second little elevator pitch for the prospect. So mm-hmm. I got you here in person. I'm gonna let you do it. Sell me this pen on Landers Nolly. Hold on, sell me this pen. Like explain it. <laughs> so all right, so uh, so sell me if you if I was a, an NBA organization, how would you sell mm-hmm. yourself? Uh, efficient three and D. I feel like. Efficient shooting and efficient guarding in my position. That's as as <laughs> as as good as I can sell it. <laughs> great <laughs> efficient, shooter, great mm-hmm. defender, great defender. I, energy, I feel like my playmaking. Yeah, energy. My playmaking underrated for sure. My ability to use my pump fake, get downhill and create opportunities. Uh, using my size in the mid post to look over and create maybe a, a opportunity for the help to come in. Just rotation in the defense. Uh, that was, that's that's my sale for sure. I love it. Uh, Landers, thank you for coming here, chopping it up, watching film, letting everybody get to know you and your game a little bit better. If they're not familiar, if you're not familiar, get familiar. Uh, Good luck through the rest of the process. An exciting time. Um, Yeah, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to to draft night and getting to see you get your name called. So appreciate appreciate you coming to chop it up. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity.